My name is Mark Willis from Baltimore City. Um, parents, Barbara and Isaac Willis, but they both come out, they was born in the 20s, 1922, 1925. And uh, my occupation, retired city worker, now I'm as a neighborhood activist in my community, training myself to be a Baltimore City historic person dealing with the um, legacy of the blacks that lived it in Sandtown area of Baltimore City, where the original blacks was hutting that when they was coming from out of South, and that was our entertainment, art and entertainment inst institutional area that we had in Baltimore City, it's Pennsylvania Avenue. So I'll be trying to do my local personal research on trying to establish all the, the, the people that did well things to establish us in our community to build us up to where the, we is now. And we got to try to recapture where they left off at as far as they passed on as far as death. And we try to continue on to build a legacy of restoring Pennsylvania Avenue. Outstanding. Uh, you started out talking about your parents. Yes. Uh, could you tell me what more can yeah. you tell me about your parents, where yeah. they're from, and uh, why is their history important to you? Yes, their history, my, my, my father's history is deeper than my mother's history because my father's family boy came from out the South. My mother's side of the family, both all was born and raised in Baltimore City. But it's just amazed me that the, the history of my parents, they came here, and, you know, my father, they found, both of them leaks into slavery. And, but they came here and made a way. My father and his family started a, a, a trucking business that they had through his father and his brothers and sisters all did the trucking business together. And he wound up to he died. He was driving dump trucks all the way to he was like 72 years old. And my mother, she wound up going to um, nursing school and wind up being a nurse at North Charles General Hospital in Baltimore City until she got ill and passed on. But both of them deceased. And they did a well thing as far as raising us because they, they I really never got beaten physically, but it just would be how they could beat you with common sense. They would beat us with common sense of us doing something wrong and we will sit there and cry like a little baby, like they was whipping us. But they knew how to lash at us verbally and, and put us in order as old um, seven brothers and sisters. And so in the retelling of that story, you know, what, what does that mean for you in terms of uh, the legacy you carry in you with their memory? Right, the legacy is that we, what you say out your mouth, you gotta stand for it. And that's one of the breakdowns we having as parents. As you, as you saying something to your kids about right and wrong, you gotta stick to it as far as you acting it out yourself. I can't tell you don't smoke cigarettes and I'm smoking a pack a day as a parent. I can't tell you don't drink and you gobbling down liquor as a parent. So you gotta practice a lot of this stuff going on, which it's, it's got out of control that a lot of parents ain't holding, they holding steady fast to what they saying out their mouth to move their kids forward and not like the other people that spoke on. You gotta keep bringing the history. Like I go in the store, I tell my grandkids, see all these shoes laying on the floor, locker room, uh, uh, um, shoe value and all these places. I say, when I was coming up and to go in the store, they measure my feet and take the box of shoe up to the counter and I get them shoes and go out. I didn't have a variety of shoes to try on. I couldn't try hats on and then leave it laying on the counter. They would size your head up, put a hat on your head and take you to the cashier. So a lot of these people gotta, gotta realize people lived and died to make life the way it is now easy, but we still gotta understand that we still don't have all the freedom that we want because we reenacting it because your history. If you ain't studying your history, you gonna repeat it. 
And I thought that was a myth thing to say that, but if you don't know your history, you're constantly gonna repeat it and wind up why are you still in the same situation? Like, like was we dealing with Baltimore City. All the black leadership that we have, I don't even think none of them took a real history course because they would be embedded in they, they in their spirit and loyal to creating a, a beautiful black Baltimore. But while you don't have no history and you just collecting dollars, you ain't curing the problem because you ain't practicing with history embedded in you to be loyal to the people uh, uh, of, of your, uh, your constituent of your black community. Along that vein, uh, why then is it important to you that people get out and vote? Oh, 100% you gotta vote. When people say I don't vote, that's why the politicians go on deaf ear. As you come to me and say, telling me any problems you have, social problems, family problems, then I say you vote. And you say, why I should vote? I ain't gonna vote. Then you go on deaf ear because you can't make me or break me because you ain't even voting. So you tell you to beat your own self down when you don't vote and you don't own your own houses. You don't have no voice. Now as I own my own house, I got a voice in my community. When they come and say, What's going on? Why trash in your alley? Why this and that? Do you own your house? Yeah, I own my house. Now you got leverage, because now I pay taxes. So now I got a level ground with you. So you're going to try to make me happy because you collecting my tax money. And then as far as voting, to building your community, that's where that come from, voting. If you don't vote, that's why a lot of situation in Baltimore City in certain communities is down pit because the people say, I don't vote. I don't care nothing about politicians, and then that's what they do. When they get their they, they money from the federal government, they put it somewhere else because you don't make or break me. You just making noise. So a lot of people miss out on developing their communities but not without voting. And not only voting for the person, you gotta look at the whole ballot. You gotta look at the whole ballot and say, if they saying we wanna build libraries, you wanna build a road to your community, you got to answer these questions. A lot of people in Baltimore City, I worked on election board, they go in there and just want the candidate name and then cut the machine off. And then they say, oh, how they just built the horseshoe? How they built the Raven Stadium? I ain't vote. Then they say, hey, you vote for that at election time. So a lot of people got to understand the whole formality of voting. Thank you very much.